So we'll go for the questions. Uh, there was a question from Ganesh Prasad. Is use of rifiximab in SLE with encephalopathic manifestations will be a cause of any concern? Uh, curiously, this was a typical uh, scenario that I had encountered in one of my patients who I had used uh, rifiximab for a very resistant lupus. And then he came down with uh, uh, an altered uh, behavior. And we had to uh, CT and the MRI revealed that he had a healthy simplex uh, encephalitis involving the temporal lobe. So you can have <clears throat> tricky presentations of uh, the viral diseases in uh, rituximab use. Fortunately, the patient uh, recovered uh, beautifully and they had undergone a transplant, he's doing well. The second question that he has asked is about the panelist experience in congenital nephrotic syndrome. What is the least age of use of rituximab by the group? I wouldn't think that congenital nephrotic syndrome uh, will budge for with uh, rituximab. Uh, maybe, Jacob, do you have any experience? I also, I have not tried it, but I don't think it will work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had also asked about the anti-rituximab antibody test availability in India. I don't think uh, it is available. I may be I corrected, know. but uh, if anybody knows that it is available somewhere, possibly it will be useful. But I don't think in the <coughs> scenario, clinical scenario, that we are using uh, rituximab for short periods of time. This anti-rituximab antibody is really going to matter. The, uh, again, about the excretion of rituximab in the urine in nephrotic syndrome, Dr. Uh, Edwin was alluding to that. Yes. Uh, there was another question from Prabhu about uh, use of rituximab in membranous nephropathy patients with uh, high antibody titers, uh, levels above 150. Uh, Dr. Edwin, do you have anything to say on that? Actually, nobody has really uh, uh, formally studied the levels and the dose to be recommended. So we really do not. Yeah. Probably. So fact, the uh, levels are also not freely available. I see most often we go for either the uh, plot testing of the uh, biopsies or the with the help of the liver cells, we do the plot testing, isn't it? With the indirect yeah, immunoglobulins, yeah. the titers. Yeah. No, the serum uh, levels could be checked, yeah. uh, especially monitoring. It may be yeah. useful. I think uh, a few... It may predict, a, a, predict a, a relapse or uh, it may even uh, give us some clue that remission is going to happen when the yeah. serum levels of the uh, anti pale layer antibodies yeah. go down. But the thing is, uh, again, we, sh we must have st standardized this test and uh, it's a, li a little erratic in whatever I have seen. Mm. So uh, we should have a lab that is exclusively, or uh, somebody is lo say, exclusively looking uh, into this particular aspect of uh, the anti-PLAR serum antibodies. But what's been recommended is when somebody has got a severe nephrotic syndrome, uh, it is recommended that you go with a high dose of Ritux, a one gram dose of Ritux. The other thing is, uh, if the, it is uh, into the serum, if you find high uh, titers of anti pale air antibody in the serum, yeah. it means it's actually a spillover after the sink. So whatever binding happens in the glomerulus, and then whatever you find in the serum is one that's actually coming in after that. So a high level would indicate probably that we must use a uh, higher dose of Ritux. Question from Ramsa Misyatram and about uh, the length of effect of Rituximab depends on the background dose of steroids. I think so because Rituximab and uh, the steroids and mycophenolate, all these have an effect on the B cells. And so the if you are going to have only rituximab, I don't think that you will have a longer remission. You need to follow. Again, multiple studies have shown that when you use rituximab along with a background steroids or MMR, then the relapses uh, are very widely spaced. 
and you are able to get a wide uh, uh, remission period. Whereas it is not the so when you use only rituximab and stop with that. And uh, yeah. Dr. Sabat, yeah. Sabat yeah. sir, uh, yeah. we'll also recollect that for steroid dependent nephrotic syndromes. Yeah. You actually induce remission with steroid and then only give returns. Yes. So, uh, which means that there is an effect of steroid. Yes. And that is actually maintained with retux. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, Bala has uh, sent a uh, letter of appreciation about Dr. Jo Jacob's uh, great work. And there was another question about um, the absolute serum creatinine level for avoiding rituximab therapy from Dr. Anita. Do we have any absolute level or do we go by the biopsies on the, the clinical profile where we think that there is a point of no return where rituximab is not going to have any benefit and it, in fact it may increase, aggravate the side effects like just like how cyclophosphamide hold off when the creatinine goes up beyond say 3 or 4 milligrams after that I think it is all fibrotic tissue and you are not going to gain anything. Yeah. The study that I quoted, that it yeah. was useful even yeah. in stage 3 and stage yeah. 4 of uh, CKD. Yeah. But that's again a very small very study, small study. About 14 patients, 14 patients only. Yeah. Uh, about uh, ischemia, reperfusion injury, are there any experience of rituximab? I really don't know. Uh, Actually, there is, a, I mean, I, we, I don't have any personal experience, but there is a Korean study yeah. which says in 2012, like, uh, I just saw in transplantation. That there may be a role of rituximab in uh, preventing uh, paper okay. fishing. So we don't know. Not much yeah. after that. Not many papers. Yeah. I think we come to the end of uh, this highly stimulating uh, discussion on this molecule where uh, not much uh, light has been uh, focused on in the recent webinars, at least. Uh, so uh, I think we'll close down and. Uh, I'll leave the floor to Dr. to the MQ. Thank you. And uh, I think, uh, Sampath, I would la again like to acknowledge uh, Jacob's work. I think yeah. it is a uh, path-breaking work, yes. especially from India. And yeah. uh, uh, it has given us some insight and also some sort of evidence we can use low-dose. I mean, all of us in our mind know that we could use low-dose, but there is a uh, uh, lot of confidence after listening to your talk. Thank you, Jacob, for the very excellent well, paper. Very well said. I, and so you, I think uh, I, a round of, I, I learned round a lot. Of I learned a lot from your paper. Yes. yes. Yeah. Round of E applause is in order. Yes. Yes. Yes.